there was a full page ad that we physicians, there were about 50 signatures put in the Oslo News Gazette this past weekend that some of you may have seen. The purpose of that ad, which really starts out as an open letter to the citizens of Osceola County with a petition to the city of Kissimmee from your medical community concerning the opening of a new abortion facility. Um, the reason for this was to counter some of what we consider uh, misinformation being distributed to people in positions of authority and others in the community by Planned Parenthood of Greater Orlando. Uh, that information would suggest that the folks at Planned Parenthood and a new abortion facility are going to provide non-judgmental non care to women of Osceola County as though we, physicians and the health department and the crisis training centers have not been doing the same thing. Uh, we want to take a moment tonight to ask the city of Kissimmee to recognize the work that has been done by the many physicians who are presented here tonight um, on behalf of the women and the children of Osceola County. I don't think anybody would doubt the uh, incredible contribution that they make day in and day out. We have a physician with us, Dr. Barry Patel, who's one of my personal heroes, having delivered one of my children, but who works tirelessly on behalf of women uh, in this community. And many in this room probably have had their children delivered by him, by the other physicians, Dr. Denardis, Dr. Palazzolo, who are off doing surgery as we speak. These physicians accept Medicaid patients with no questions asked. We have a health department that has many services that they provide to women with no questions asked. And all at a price that is actually more affordable than what Planned Parenthood of Greater Orlando says that they will provide in their health center, as they call it. So we want to make sure that the that even though you say you're in no position to stop this health center, as they call it, from opening, we want to make it clear that the only service that they are providing to Osceola County and to the city of Kissimmee that is not already provided is abortion. And make it very clear, please understand this, that abortion is business for Planned Parenthood. It's the number one source of revenue as a surgical procedure. Just down the road in Orlando, last year, $3 million profit generated by Planned Parenthood of Greater Orlando, 1.4 million of that came from surgical abortions. So we're hoping to show to you tonight that this procedure known as abortion will be the main reason for this center opening up this abortion facility. Uh, and we're asking you, on behalf of the city of Kissimmee, on behalf of all the citizens of Kissimmee and Osso County, to look a little more closely tonight, or let's say a lot more closely. I think I used the word wiggle room at the end of my speech last time. It's more than just wiggle room. There are zoning considerations that have to be entertained by this city before they can be, before the abortion facility can be, uh, can open its doors. It has been, I have a list here of all the medical facilities in the immediate vicinity of 610 Oak Commons and their zoning, and whether or not they're B5 or B3. B3 includes surgery, B5 does not. B5 is commercial office space. That is what has been given to this organization. We want to make the argument loud and clear tonight that what Planned Parenthood of Greater Orlando intends to do at 610 Oak Commons is nothing short of surgery, that is surgical abortion. And to not address this in your zoning, uh, at whatever level of the city addresses zoning, would be a, a, a huge dereliction of duty by the city of Kissimmee. To grant them a certificate of occupancy without doing due diligence with regards to appropriate and proper zoning would certainly not be something that the city residents or the net people at Osceola County uh, would agree to, uh, or certainly it wouldn't sit well with most of us in this room. So I just ask you to look at that zoning uh, conflict, as it were, right now, and ask yourselves and maybe respond to us at some point as to what process you would have to go through to rezone this facility and whether that gives you any, uh, any ability to say no to Planned Parenthood. Uh, I have another speaker that I'd like to introduce right now because we'll be, we don't want to keep you here too long either, and it will not be as long as the last visit, but I'd like to at this point introduce Dr. Barry Patel, uh, who I mentioned earlier is an obstetrician gynecologist. She's been here an awfully long time, a lot longer than I have, done some great work for the community.
to address this issue of the surgical aspects of abortion and what they're bringing to our community. Uh, Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, I just want to bring my experience uh, about this uh, abortion issue that we are planning to execute over there. And uh, I want to just give my experience from the past. And when I was in a residency program, I did go through the whole phase of this abortion that we had to mandatory learn. And now, since I moved to Florida for the last 25 years, uh, we do not do so. We, uh, and um, what I really want to address to that issue is Surgical, when you do abortions, it, it is a surgical procedure. You have to understand that when these procedures are done, a lot of, lot of things that are done in uh, abortion procedures, there could be a lot of complications. There are women who have uteruses perforated while doing the procedure. They have a lot of women who go through a lot of bleeding. And at certain points, we have to rush them to the emergency room and to the operating rooms in the hospital. So. When we have a freestanding center like this, they have to have some kind of affiliation with some center that if some kind of problem does happen, they have to refer the patient right away before they really lose the patient. And also, being by itself a freestanding center, they have to meet all the same standards of any like freestanding surgery center or um, they have to have an anesthesiologist on site, they have to have people who revive if the heart works to stop. All those are mandated stuff for you know, they should be zoned for it. And I think this being a free standing facility, I think the zoning is very important that you guys need to consider when you approve it uh, that they can do the circular abortions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Dr. Patel, could you give us your street address, please? We've got to keep track of all that stuff here. <laughs> yeah, I practice on uh, 207 Park Place Boulevard in Park Place. I'd like to also at this time ask uh, Dr. Massey, Johnson Massey, he's a cardiovascular cardiologist in the community whose office is right adjacent to him. I know where his office is, I was there today. Adjacent to the new facility. I'm Dr. Massey, my address is 601, Oklahoma, the same. Uh, my office is located uh, uh, right across from this uh, proposed abortion clinic. And uh, as the other speaker did say, that uh, it's a surgical procedure. And there are uh, some restrictions. When we opened the office, we were not allowed to run the surgical center in that area. And uh, so that's one point. The second point is that uh, um, a few, few weeks ago, when there was a bomb threat in that area, we, we had significant problem trying to get our patient get to our offices. And whether you like it or not, I think this is going to happen more and more. And I'm concerned about my safety of my patient getting my patient to my office. These are all elderly patients and we do need the care and it's very difficult for them to even park their cars because the whole thing is not just have hours. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. As Dr. Joe Torres come forward, just, yes. just, just to spend a few minutes discussing some of the uh, business aspects of the Planned Parenthood operation. My name is Dr. Joseph Torres. I'm a physician at Conference. I've been for 21 years. My office, I have one actually, uh, West Pass Street, and we have an office <coughs> right across the street from uh, from the Planned Parenthood clinic on uh, Oak Commons. Uh, strictly for uh, Medicare and Medicaid patients that we just recently opened up, and it was effective. Um, my concern, and obviously when we're talking about this, we're talking about time period, everybody starts thinking of what we're really concerned about other than the abortion issue. I think that's really important. We're not talking about women's health. We don't mind, and we encourage them providing women's health. We think that that's something that is a necessity. But in doing so, that they also provide clear and very lucid ideas as to what happens. As they said, as a surgery center, you're actually providing care under a different 
um, entity. So you have to have an anesthesiologist or a surgery center, just like it would be a plastic surgeon. So I don't know that that area is zoned for that, and that's something to keep in mind. So if there's any funding going to be going for this, keep in mind that there's two separate entities. One is the women's health entity, and the other is the surgical center entity. And that's something that we're concerned about. My practices won't be affected because the one right across the street, when they had that bomb scare, they sent the doctor home. So they closed our practices, they closed our office. It's going to affect the hospital because the entrance way off of Oak Street was also blocked off. So it's, you know, hopefully that won't never occur again. But also, we need to keep that in mind that it's going to affect the businesses in that area. I've been here for 21 years, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad and I'm proud of to have been practicing in Kissimmee for this long, but I also want everybody to realize that there's going to be a big impact to this community. So thank you for listening. Thank you. And I really hope you all appreciate how uh, difficult it is for physicians in this community to step forward and speak publicly. I mean, for every physician that's spoken tonight, there's three or four others who are out doing the work that we're supposed to be doing, that wish they could be here. Uh, this, is, this is a large consensus. I was speaking to Dr. Imtaz Ahmed, who's an allergist. He was so upset about this issue, he said he can't believe that evil is being allowed to come into our city, and he wonders where all the good people are. Those were his words exactly. Where are all the good people that are going to try to prevent this evil from taking over our city? And the evil doesn't necessarily, as you just heard, we're not always talking about the act of abortion here which many of us do agree is evil. We're talking about what is going to happen in the midst of this healing community known as Oak Commons. And I'd like you all to just pay attention to the screen for no more than three minutes. Uh, to sh we have found from snippets of, of similar abortion centers or facilities in the Southeast, uh, and we can run that. This is nothing that's unrealistic, as you've just heard. Uh, Someone mentioned the, uh, the bomb scare, okay? I've asked, been asked by many people, did you do that, did we do that? And of course we did not do that. But the reality is, I spoke to one of our, our, our colleagues who's up in Orlando, if UPS delivers a package to 610 Oak Commons that is supposed to go to 600 Oak Commons, they'll be calling in the bomb squad, all right? If there's a, any, anything that looks at all suspicious that they don't expect, and whenever that happens, you will be shutting down businesses. This is a three minute video I'd like you to watch. Make sure this is what God wants us to do. No, she's not a person. You will have a Okay, look, I'm telling you. Heavenly Father, we look to you now for guidance as to what we are supposed to do. Lord, you are. That's her clinic. And that's her police department. Her sheriff's department. We need an ambulance up at the Ware Woman. It's 1564 Dixie Way. Okay, what's going on? We have a patient with a real low blood pressure, 54 over 30. Is she a surgery patient? Yes. Um, is she up for surgery today? Yes. How many hours? Uh, let me see when she had her surgery. She had her surgery. She was done with surgery at 1235. So about two and a half hours. But she's responsive? She is responsive. Okay. And your name? My name. We're on the way. If she gets worse before we get there, call right back. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, rescue. Hi, we need an ambulance at a wear woman. Uh -huh. We have a patient uh, with heavy bleeding. Your name again? Bye-bye. Fire rescue. We need a transport. We have a possible perforation, and we'd like um, transport with no lights, no sirens. And then we are 911. We have to come emergency. 
Okay, so you have to have lights and sirens? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what's wrong with them? Uh, a possible perforation. What's that? Where the uterus has been perforated. Oh. She was having an abortion. We pray to have the Father that the police officers who are standing today would be able to defend children to the utmost. We pray, Almighty God, a blessing upon them that they will rise up and stand for life, Almighty God. Stand with them in their eyes when they're put in a bad situation. Break their hearts, Almighty God. Let the day come when they can stand with those who are right and do a kiss we pray to help the Father to do a wondrous thing. And Lord, we thank you and praise you and glorify you for all that you are doing. For all that you are doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We don't mean to exaggerate a point at all with that video. Um, there will be many prayer warriors out there praying that this abortion clinic will, facility excuse me, will not open its doors. Um, thankfully, we have a wonderful relationship with the Kissimmee Police Department, but the reality is they need to be present, as they've said, even to protect us. We've had one incident, actually two, in the last two weeks, where one of our prayer warriors has been attacked, uh, has been accosted, not attacked, approached in a rather hostile manner. And we've been very thankful to have KPD, you know, watching our back on this. Um, having said that, there are many victims of abortion. I think you can see from that video, the entire community will be victimized. And I made that comment at the last meeting. I'd like to ask Dr. Jose Fernandez, as our last physician speaker, to come up. And then we just have a couple more items before we finish in our 30 minute time. Jose Fernandez, 300 North John Young Parkway, Kissimmee, Florida. I'm a family physician here. I've been here uh, about 14 years. I also do obstetrics and gynecology. It so happens that since our last meeting, I've had uh, two different patients that have come to me who attempted to abort their children and had changed their minds. Uh, one call I got uh, on the weekend around 10 o'clock at night. The other one that was a girl, or excuse me, a young lady, who had uh, twice gone to the abortion clinic to try and uh, have the abortion. Both times they had done, tried to do the pill abortion, did not work. They scheduled her for a surgical abortion and at that time she changed her mind. And I've been very diligent to do the very best to help these women save the lives of their babies. And one of them, uh, the most recent one, uh, actually has twins. And thanks be to God that through the interventions that we've been taught so far, both babies are alive. But you know, um, what I have to do with, what I have to deal with is the trauma that these women are going through, have gone through, uh, and always not knowing until these babies are born whether those failed attempts at abortion, whether it harmed their children or not. Also, for the women that I've taken care of for many years now, who've had abortion sometimes a year ago, five years ago, I just had a lady um, who has all kinds of medical conditions. And finally, you know, um, one of the things that I do is functional medicine. Functional medicine is root cause analysis, trying to figure out why, it, whatever's wrong with the person. And the only thing, because I've done every possible test known to man in this uh, person, and finally it came up, the fact that she had had an abortion about eight years ago, and the only time she's ever been pregnant. And one of the things that I did for her, I, I referred her uh, to a, a treatment center uh, where they take care of women who've gone through this abortion procedure to deal with it at an emotional level, because often uh, it's one of the things that keeps women from getting pregnant again. So. This is a horrific burden on our society, and it's a burden on all of us, but it's one that we embrace because we're in the business of life. So I want you to take that into consideration, and, and, and imagine that facility isn't here. These are women that have come to me from far away. They've had these procedures far from us. What's gonna happen when it's in our back door, and how is that gonna further impact our, our world in the same? Thank you.
I want to, a little bit of a segue here, but it's actually all part of the same issue. I said that we have many victims of abortion that are going to happen here, that a lot of victim, people will be victimized. The Planned Parenthood of Greater Orlando has, in their own words, said that they're coming to Kissimmee to service the Hispanic community of Kissimmee. And I have been fortunate to be with many of the uh, Hispanic ministers over the last several weeks. I know Commissioner Rentas and I were together at one function where we heard the outcry from these wonderful men and women of God. And, and, I, and in a very powerful way, they have been telling me, keep this away from our youth. Now remember, you know, Mayor Swan, you said at the very beginning of the meeting that this is beyond your power to change anything. That's, that's the message we keep getting repeatedly. But I did say that there is still this matter of the zoning, and you've heard a lot about the surgical nature of abortion. So as you're hearing some of these comments to be made, I think we still have something to do at the city level before we give them their final <coughs> certificate of occupancy. I'd like to ask um, Enrique Gali to step forward. <laughs> Enrique Gali, G A L L I, 5218, Sunset Canyon Drive, to see me, 34758. Uh, first you don't of all, have to lean forward. It. All right. It's a, uh, first of all, I don't speak much, much English, but I'm going to do my best. Um, I've been fighting abortion for three years. I go and step in front of the clinic with my 11-year-old uh, son, and we both preach uh, from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock, and um, of course, I don't speak my English, but my son doesn't work, and uh, we be, we are able to pull a lot of growth from the just abortion clinic. Um, one of the uh, one of the girls that we pull over, she had an abortion, and. Um, and she came back a couple of days later because she went to the emergency hospital because they left part of the baby inside her. So she had to go for a second abortion. So this is one of the little things, you know, that the many things that you can see in this uh, abortion clinic. So um, I want to tell you please to consider and, and, and see what you guys can do. Um, also, um, uh, let's get my, let's get my mind what I say. Um, I work for the school, Osceola School, and uh, now that this place is going to open, I hear many girls talking about Planned Parenthood and now uh, talking about have sex because they can get all the help they need from Planned Parenthood because that's what Planned Parenthood does. Uh, talk about sex, teach kids about sex, and then uh, offer a place to go and have an abortion. So um, I know you've been saying that there's nothing you can do uh, uh, since the beginning. But uh, uh, the God that I serve, uh, he doesn't know the work can do. Because every time he comes out, this reminds me uh, in the Bible about Goliath, David, and Israel people. Uh, we are Israel. We got the coward soul. Uh, we couldn't do anything. So I think the only thing we need right there is David. Thank you. I see at the back of the room Dr. Jorge Otoya, who's with the Osceola Cancer Center, which is on the other side of that parking lot is, uh, will be the abortion facility. Good afternoon. I am a medical oncologist. I've been practicing in the Kissimmee area for more than 20 years. Um, we've been, uh, for the past 20 years, living a very peaceful community of physicians around the Osceola uh, Hospital and all the community of physicians that we've been around. <clears throat> but recently, because all this is happening, a new facility is building basically two doors away from our facility. We just, uh, it's been a, a hard awakening for what's gonna happen in the future. To begin with, it seems to me that all this building is bringing to the community people who are <coughs> pro-abortion and people who are really against abortion. But we have seen walking into um, 
West Oak Street in front of the cancer center. And one of my first experience was the many of my patients that were scheduled to be seen that morning for this past month, they had to turn away because they were afraid to really get into this facility because of the amount of people there. So the, the, the treatment was canceled for that. Those are patients who are uh, with an, an extensive disease, many of them suffering with cancer, and they have to be rescheduled. Uh, that's number one. Number two is one morning I walk into my facility and I couldn't even walk into my facility because the police was blocking an entire block. Um, and that happened to me that I worked there, but all my patients that particular morning would not be able to get into the facility because there was this bomb threat that probably is not going to be the first time that it's going to happen. It's going to be happening more and more and more. So therefore, before we give the okay for this facility to open close by, you have to have in consideration that there are some other physicians that are working in that area and it's going to create a very ungraceful situation. Many of the facilities that are close to the cancer center, we have uh, covenants. And one of the covenants is that there is no surgical center that need to be um, created in front of the hospital. Who are they that they're going to be really opening a surgical center for abortion? I don't know how they, they, they got all these approved, but it's something that you need to really consider. I believe seriously in the law, I believe in the belief of the people and also the right to choose. But there are some entities like this one that is not so famous. And unfortunately, we have seen several publications and you can see that on the internet, how they are really trying to help in, in this part of the planning. And we have seen that they've been committing abortion. I agree that there are some abortions that can be not simply because if a woman is raped and, and is pregnant, probably it will be okay to do an abortion. But if we, we have a someone who is a, a six months pregnant and then um, going into an abortion without having significant education about what's going to happen, I think that that's criminal. That is criminal. And so therefore, I, and there are so many families that are looking to adoption of babies. Uh, I, I don't know that is including into that. But I, I'm, I'm a concerned citizen about what's going to happen in that area of the hospital. Thank you, sir. We've got Ethan? about five minutes left. Five minutes left? Okay. We'd like to have just a couple of minutes. Ethan Fernandez here? Yes. Just a couple of minutes there, and then we'll close with um, another mutual friend of ours. I think I've got just about five minutes. Good, uh, good evening. I've got prepared remarks, so sorry, just a preacher sign. My name is Efren Fernandez. I'm from Casa de Restauración in El Centro Alto. It's translated House of Restoration. We are a church in the local community, uh, 1024 Plaza Drive in Kissimmee, Florida, 34743. I'd like to read an excerpt from WFTV. Planned Parenthood CEO Jenna Tosh said abortion accounts for less than 10% of their services. And she said they're not focusing on the critics. Quote, more than 90% of what we do is life-saving preventive care. We're just focused on opening this center and opening our doors to everyone in the community, end quote. However, if the doors were open to everyone, then why do they target the minority community? 80% of their locations target the Hispanic and black population. If 90% of what they do is life-saving, then how is it that Planned Parenthood performed one-third of all abortions in the United States? Up from less than one-fourth of, or 25%, excuse me, just eight years ago. A spokesperson for Central Florida Planned Parenthood told the Osceola News Gazette that the new mega facility in Kissimmee is just the first planned step in a much larger effort to expand the reach of their abortion business throughout the area. And this is what brings the community of pastors and leaders before you today. Community of minorities and Hispanics before you today. And a Hispanic pastor before you today. We fear this is just the beginning. My parents first moved here in 1988. 108 San Blas Drive. Since then, I've been a citizen of Kissimmee for all but just about 10 months. 
I have served as senior pastor of House of Restoration in Kissimmee since 2009. Our church serves mostly the residents of one of Interior Lakes. And I am joined today by many pastors in Kissimmee. The 2012 census puts the Hispanic population at just over 47%. In the state of Florida, it's 23%. In Kissimmee, the Hispanic community is almost 60%. In Buena Ventura Lakes, it's almost 70 The pastoral community fully expects the impact of this facility opening to be severe. The pastors of Kissimmee serve because that is what we have been called for. We serve to restore lives and to help them find purpose in life. We are deeply concerned. In fact, we are gravely troubled. That this center will become a public nuisance. As a Hispanic pastor, I speak not just for myself, but for several others that serve the interests of the residents of Kissimmee, some of which are here today in this chamber, others are present in the halls, and still many others are not here at all today, but are united with me. We want to emphatically state our opposition to the business that Planned Parenthood is vested in. The Hispanic pastoral community is vested in restoring lives that have been torn down by such immorality as that espoused by at Planned Parenthood. We believe Planned Parenthood is vested in interests which are toxic and do not serve the best interests of our public. The Hispanic pastoral community is vested in providing resources which will enable our citizens to reconcile between extremely tough choices. We believe Planned Parenthood by virtue of their actions to be vested in the business of targeting primarily Hispanic and black communities to extend extend, excuse me, and propagate their abortion agenda. The Hispanic pastoral community of Kissimmee work tirelessly to serve our parishioners and to serve the citizens in their times of plight. We will serve based on the precepts ordained by the Almighty God. In closing, we do not wish for the, our community, Kissimmee, to lose its identity. The website, Kissimmee.org, says the following of the city of Kissimmee. A community of neighborhoods for families. As a past that serves largely the Hispanic community, there is a strong belief in this city model. We are Kissimians or Kissimiites, however, whatever the right term is. The Hispanic community strongly believes in the family. The Hispanic pastoral community will resist any business that thrives on the perpetuation of a precept that leads to moral decadence and the deterioration of what city of Kissimmee claims to stand for, the family. We oppose any business that has a history of being a public nuisance in our communities. We vehemently oppose a business which so largely has contempt for the community they so claim to serve. The Hispanic pastors of Kissimmee are concerned for the citizen, citizens of Kissimmee due to the disdain demonstrated by Planned Parenthood relative to not just Hispanics, but all other ethnicities. Think of what our city model states and the people that we claim to serve, our families. My fear is that if we do not, we will surely be on an accelerated and expedited path to the adoption of a new model that no longer values our families. Thank you so much. Bendiciones. <laughs>
when we invite and bring in a place like this, a facility such as this. Sin may be legalized, but it will always be sin. And we want to Every man did what was right in his own eyes, and you know what happened? Evil prevailed. Sodom and Gomorrah is a good example of the sexual perversions that were promoted, and it angered God, and it evoked His wrath on them. The thing that I would like to stress today is that the impact is not just for the city of the center. It is for the whole county. Every one of us is going to be impacted by this. Every one of us is going to feel the emotional strain that we've already felt throughout the county. All the way in St. Cloud, I felt it there. It also affects the moral issues to everybody that is on this list, that has signed these petitions, that is opposed to this clinic or this facility, as it is said. I will also say in closing that, folks, we have seen and we've stood against moral facilities that would come to our county and we've said no. And we've turned them away. Dog tracks, strip clubs, casinos. Recently, we did something, with our law enforcement officers did something very, very important when they took down these peel mills which affected all of us. I buried way too many because of it. We're going to feel the effects of this as well in St. Cloud, in every area, all the way around in the neighboring counties are going to feel this. I urge you, wash your hands of this bloody money and don't accept it. Probably will about wrap it up, except I want to let you all make sure that you take a look at what you got in this brochure, what Planned Parenthood says, what Planned Parenthood does, and please focus on what they do with their sexual education curriculum for children as young as the age of four and seven and nine, and as a parent of five children, realizing how, you know, we live in a, in a great county with a great school district that has to this point said the only thing teachers are allowed to talk about in Osceola County, we have several teachers here, is abstinence. We are not having teachers in our third and fourth grade classrooms showing how to put condom on a banana, all right? These sorts of things that are happening because of the sex ed curriculums in Boston and actually even Orange County that are being accepted, this is the philosophy of Planned Parenthood that I said at the last meeting, I don't believe any one of you agrees with. And you say you're powerless to stop it from coming I think I've made my point clear and our previous speaker even more clear. Yet there are precedents for stopping disagreeable entities from coming into the midst of our communities, our children, our families. It's a challenge to all of you that we're issuing, but we're issuing it with love and respect and with a great sense of a need for peace in our community. And you heard that from Dr. Toya. We want healing, but you don't get There is no healing without peace. I see it all day long. You know, my patients are not at peace, that's why they're in my office, all right? This, this entity, this facility coming in, is not only fracturing the lives of these women and children, but it's also fracturing our medical community. I don't have time to go into the specifics on that tonight, but, but at the same time, let me say to you that if you look at these 50 physician signatories, and you realize that this, these are Muslims, Hindus, Jews, Christians of all faiths, that are coming together, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I made these calls in one day to physicians to get them to sign up. If you give me a couple of weeks, you'll have this 95% of our medical community and 95% of our pastoral community you know, knocking on these doors. I appreciate your patience with us, but I, I, I'd love to hear some response about the zoning, specifically what actions you are going to take as a city to address this, uh, call it a mistake, in terms of them being zoned as office space, when in fact they'll be doing surgical abortion. We need to hear, before they're given a certificate of occupancy, what the city's going to do to prevent them from coming in in a mistaken zone. And thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here 
pretty dependent. The doctor will tell us we're going to have submitted a request to speak for three minutes. If I no, we're not going to do that. You may have missed what I said at the beginning. Yeah. These are all of these here. The audience uh, okay. are going to be kept as part of the record. Okay. So, and and those who are indicated their objection, that will be part of the record also. Is it possible to submit? Written? If he's not part of the crew, you can allow him one minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever you want. All right, how about I just give you one or two minutes, real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Schmecka. I live at 198 Orange Avenue in St. Cloud, Florida. Um, I'm a member of the Florida Bar, and I'm here not to address the medical issues and the pastoral concerns that have already been amply addressed. I'm here to address specifically the legal issues that I think you're, you're rightly concerned about, along with the others. Um, I am a father of six, soon to be a father of nine. I'm also a uh, minister of the gospel, but I'm not here in that capacity per se. Uh, last time I came uh, on April 1st and I asked you to stop this clinic, that's not my primary focus tonight, although my view hasn't changed on that. But tonight I would implore you to please stop, look, and listen before you proceed. I'm just asking you to slow down and consider a few legal considerations before this mega abortion facility uh, goes online in our community. Under Florida's uh, municipal home rule, uh, constitutional authority, uh, you have any powers uh, for a that can be exercised by you as a commission for a municipal purpose, except when expressly prohibited by law. So you have very broad authority. So there's actually quite a bit that you can do, and I wanna mention a few of those. One is you can use your investigative powers to subpoena Planned Parenthood to get Planned Parenthood to speak on the record under oath as to the, with precision as to their intended use. Are they gonna have retail sale of pharmaceuticals? You have a right to know. The community has a right to know. The zoning category in question, B5, has certain limitations on retail sales. Um, are they gonna use their facilities for political activism and training? This is very common in other Planned Parenthood facilities. Not sure you bargained for that. You have a right to know. We have a right to know. Are they going to use it for surgical outpatient care? Much has been said on that. What are the anticipated patient volumes, parking needs? Are they more than what you expect? How will you deal with nuisance impacts? We've heard a lot about that. Some of the human traffickers, the prostitute, prostitutes that Mr. Pancake expressed concerns about earlier. How will they, how will Planned Parenthood plan to mitigate those effects? I think those are reasonable questions to ask. Um, and they help the commission make a fully informed decision about this matter. And they also make the applicant accountable. You have a record that you can hold them to later if they deviate from it. It's a reasonable thing for you to request and expect. It's not unlawful for you to use your power as a legislative body to be diligent in doing this due diligence. No, I hate to. May I address just the business tax receipt question and quickly? Quickly, I'll do it. There's two final steps, as I understand, and they were articulated last time. One is a CO is needed and a business tax receipt, or formerly known as occupational license. Under the code, section 14293B, it defines a CO as a document certifying that the premises comply with the provisions of zoning and or building ordinances required before the presence premises may be occupied. I think it's premature for us to certify zoning compliance more diligence and inquiry are needed. It's within your power to do more inquiry. That is okay to do, it is not unlawful. And then just quickly on the business tax receipt occupation that, license. That, please, that's enough. I think we've been over backwards this evening. Okay. Uh, we, we know about business tax receipts. Just one sentence on that, I promise it'll be short. Well, just more addressed to the city manager. All right, uh, he, 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 he can ask for such pertinent other information as prescribed by the city manager. So, He's concerned about these issues. He has the authority already to inquire further. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> you have been very patient with us. I couldn't but hear please, a word you said. You have been very patient with us. Realize we have been very patient with the city of Kissimmee as well. And we have a start. <laughs> We have, we physicians, we, per, we citizens of Kissimmee who have full-time jobs in large families or short, small families, we've been doing a lot of work till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, seven days a week, to find out things that, quite frankly, the city of Kissimmee could have found out. Some legal questions or 
our statements that were made. We have a city attorney. Uh, we follow what advice we are given from a legal standpoint. And, I, and, and several weeks ago, we had a meeting in the same room. And the commission members at that time uh, may have had some questions. There may have been some thought about uh, um, what can we do. And, and I know that both the city attorney and the city manager have been digging relentlessly to see what our rules are that we have to follow. So I'm going to let uh, city attorney or city manager, whichever wants to jump in here first. Um, we, we had a recommendation that was made to us at that time that we couldn't do anything. And it wasn't what anybody in the audience wanted to hear. Uh, and, and, and here, let me, let me state ahead. very clearly. B5 zoning allows professional service establishments. It's a category that allows for businesses engaged in providing medical and other health care services. Under that category, when the city staff reviews applications that come in or reviews requests that come in uh, for, to locate at a specific location, we don't differentiate between the various types of medical services that are out there. We don't get into whether it's a doctor's office, a clinic, a laboratory, a rehab center, an outpatient surgical center. It's a catch-all category for medical uses, and hospitals and institutional care facilities are segregated out as different uses, but everything else is lumped in that category. And that category exists in seven different zoning districts, not just B5. And so when this use, or this particular operation, proposed to locate in this location, and they asked for confirmation that this location was appropriate from a zoning perspective, we told them that it was appropriate. They're getting a license from the state to operate as a healthcare facility, and as such, they meet the zoning. So I don't know specifically what the, um, the objection is from the zoning standpoint, but bottom line is, I don't believe you have the ability to say this facility cannot be there simply because of the zoning issue. The nuisance issue is a new issue. Uh, I, I'm not gonna address that because I think the city attorney maybe can address that better. But uh, from a zoning perspective, we've been enforcing it this way since the ordinance was adopted in 1994. Don, you got any? Yeah, I'll follow up. Um, basically, as the gentleman indicated, we have home rule powers, and he, he fairly accurately described what those powers are with the, with, with the limitations. And it's already been ruled by the Attorney General that we are preempted by the state when it comes to abortion clinics. We have no right to regulate abortion clinics whatsoever with the medical procedures contained in those uh, abortion clinic offices. The only thing that we have a right to do in our own rule power is establish zoning categories. And as the city manager says, the city commission in 19, I think it's 93 or 94, yeah, established back then a general category for medical and it included surgical office, you know, non-surgical variety of, of different categories all as uh, defined in the code. We've looked at the code uh, that was already previously zoned. Uh, medical facilities were already previously in there and there was nothing we can do legally to stop that uh, use to continue at that location. That's the bottom line. Um, the fact that they get a BTR, that's just a business tax receipt and all they have to do is come in and pay the money and they get their BTR. The CO is for uh, alteration CO. The CO was already issued to the building when it was first um, um, built, so that's not an issue. So from a legal standpoint, um, there's nothing we can do to stop this claim. The, the information I heard tonight from the presentation, uh, as far as what are the impacts to the surrounding businesses, other than a bomb threat that could occur anywhere, anytime, that the, that the, uh, the area was closed down, um, was really the only impact that I heard. And that's such a non-routine occurrence that that's not anything that we can, we can base uh, uh, any kind of credence on to, uh, to prohibit abortion clinics. And just so you know, 
the Supreme Court of the United States has said if we're going to restrict uses on buildings, then we have to do it under the Equal Protection Clause. And under the Equal Protection Clause, there are suspect classes. And those suspect classes have identified the right to privacy as a suspect class, which means we're held to the highest standard of uh, review by the, by the federal courts when it comes to restriction of abortion clinics. There's a Supreme Court case on point, or a federal case on point, that basically says that we have to show some state compelling interest as to how we want to distinguish abortion clinics from a clinic that does tonsils or a clinic that does any other type of minor surgery or major surgery. And I don't know that we have the evidence presented here tonight, or the evidence even exists, that we can even make that compelling state argument. So, my advice to you, this city commission that represents all the citizens of the, of the city, is that if we attempt to go in there without a good legal basis and prohibit these people from moving forward and, and don't issue a permit, they can sue us and the city can send me to be writing them a big check and paying their attorney fees, which would be very costly. And that's not the advice I would give this commission. Okay. Let me ask one more. I think last question for now. Did any member of this commission hear anything this evening or any of the discussion items that would uh, cause any of us to feel that we should take any action other than what our staff has indicated we should take, which is nothing? Did anybody feel differently than that? I, I know that, that it's not what people want to hear. This is a country and a county and a city of laws, and I cannot knowingly risk a multi-million dollar losing lawsuit because I don't like something. And I don't like, ma'am, you can lay that down. We know most of the folks here do not wish to hear the truth. We do not. It's the truth as it relates to what our powers are and what our authority is. I don't like it. And I don't think anybody is happy about it. But I, I just could not submit and risk four or five, ten million dollar lawsuit that the citizens of this city would have to absorb the cost of. So that's just me. Mayor Jake, Mayor, if I may. The commission is going to talk right now, Doctor. Hey. If they wish to talk. Anybody feel any different? No? Okay. Well, then I think we're finished with this item. I would like to maybe just interject. Wait a minute. I think the commission would like to make one comment. I just want to make a comment. Um, I, I, um, I don't like the decision that we have to make. Um, being a commissioner, it's been uh, pretty much smooth sailing. Um, and usually when I make a decision, I sleep very well at night. I did not sleep very well at past meeting. And it's been bothering me. And I know I shouldn't be putting my personal um, feelings here, all my emotional feelings, but it, it needs to be said. I'm not here to say that any woman um, that I need to tell a woman what to do with her body, but I do not like the fact that Planned Parenthood decided to choose Kissimmee and in the location right there where we're taking care of people in front of the hospital. I don't like them. don't like the fact that they said that Hispanics pretty much are going to be utilizing that. I take offense to that. Um, I always say Spanish people just like to multiply and they do. Um, so that to me was not, I did not appreciate that from Planned Parenthood. I'm saddened that by law we really can't make any decision today to, to try to do anything to, to prevent this from coming here. I, I think, Don, correct me please, but if there's any way that Maybe in the future, um, we could probably just maybe look at ways that we can um, maybe not have them have any more come in the city of Kissimmee or prevent certain type of 
procedures. I, I just well, I, I can tell you now, we cannot stop them from coming to city to city. Okay? Right. That's a legal, the Supreme Court of the, uh, the United States has said oh. that's a legal activity, and we cannot stop a legal activity. The only thing zoning can do is place conditions to lessen the impacts on the surrounding areas. That's all we can do. But as I said a moment ago, mm -hmm. then you're talking about equal protection. <coughs> We're going to have to have some compelling state interest to do that. And we've researched it. Mike and I have looked at it uh, since the last meeting. And I'll be honest with you, I'm hard pressed unless somebody can show me something concrete that we could hold our hat on that could say that we need to segregate or discriminate against abortion clinics and move them to some other area in the city. I haven't found that yet. And I would encourage anybody that's got it that shows those negative impacts, I'm, I'm open to it. But the fact that what they do medically in the building isn't the issue. It's the external impacts outside the building. And the fact that, that you have people, as I mentioned earlier tonight, the fact that you have people standing on the sidewalk protesting, that's the First Amendment right. The Supreme Court's not going to say that that's a compelling state interest because everybody's got a right to, to speak. So if people get scared and don't want to go into business because somebody's protesting, whether it's a business next door or not, I'm not going to win that argument in federal court. So, like I say, I'm open to it, but honestly, I haven't found it. So, so thank you all for coming and, and at least sharing your story and, and your concerns. Um, pardon? Sure. That'll be it. That'll be it. Um, just one thing about the city, but we still believe it might be, when you keep coming back to abortion, we keep coming back to surgery. And we still say, I mean, when Dr. Winger was in that building and Dr. Pratt and Reynoso, they could not perform DNCs in that building because it was not zoned for surgery. So I still say the fact that they'll be doing DNCs in that building, you need to look at that hard and clear about whether surgery is not a different zone, it's not commercial office space. Now having said that, and this is more for everybody out here, but it'll help you too. We have two extremely hopeful scenarios through which Planned Parenthood of Greater, Greater Orlando will not be allowed to stay in Oak Commons. It's more hopeful than what we've been dealing with here, for sure. Okay, because keep in mind, they have had to come into a deed restricted facility, a deed restricted association of healing facilities. And we have many of the physician owners of those practices who have said this is not in compliance with our deed restrictions. I would ask everybody who's watching this on television or listening tonight to also put some general pressure on Osceola Regional Medical Center because they also have in their deed restrictions on, plan, on what can happen in that building at 610 Old Commons and they'll no. be to take place right. tomorrow. That's, That's really just not, this is just not the forum for it's, these comments. It's, I appreciate it. This is the city of Kissimmee. These are the folks who are here. If you're not able to do anything. I'm letting them know things will be done. But I think well, that's that's <laughs>